Hello everyone, welcome back to Dog Q&A. This is number 33, and today we're gonna to talk about boredom busters for dogs. I'm gonna give you a few items you can give your dogs to help keep them occupied when you need to work from home or give them more to do if your dogs are um, a little too energetic or destroying things, then this can help wear them out and channel their energy into something constructive, hopefully. Now, when you look up interactive dog feeders and dog toys and things like that, you'll find, um, a lot of Nina Otteson, Kaijin, and Busy Buddy are the main uh, companies that make these. So those are great, but I wanna give you a few other options um, as well. So let me go ahead and get my share screen ready. So make sure with anything new you give your dog, you want to monitor their interaction with the new item before you just leave them alone with it. So make sure it's not small enough that they're gonna swallow it, make sure that they're interacting with it appropriately, um, that they're not kicking it around and damaging something in the house or kicking it under an item where they can't get to it. And then they're just frustrated all day. So um, just do a few test runs before you leave them alone with the new item. Okay, so. Moving into our slideshow here, boredom busters for dogs. So I'm gonna give you eight interactive dog toys to help keep your dog mentally and physically stimulated. First up, this is the Kong Wobbler. This is kind of acts like a Weeble Wobble, which is a toy we had when I was young. And the bottom is weighted the top screws off and then you can fill it with um, treats or your dog's kibble. I always recommend if you're feeding your dog a dry food then, or even a portion of it is dry, put that in a toy so you can um, feed your dog that way. Then um, <clears throat> your dog knocks it around, it wobbles back and forth and then food will come out the hole on the side, which you can see there. One word of caution here is that if you have hardwood floors, this will be very loud. <laughs> so keep that in mind. Okay, so Kong Wobbler, and these are all also um, easy to find at any major pet store or online. Then we have this snuffle mat, which I believe I put in a previous video as well. So this is supposed to mimic a dog hunting for food in the grass. This is great for dogs that eat kibble once again, but if you've got your dog on a raw diet, obviously this isn't gonna work as well. Maybe you can just put a few treats in it. This is also able to be cleaned. You imagine your dog is gonna be drooling a lot um, when they're foraging through this thing. So you can just wash it in your regular washer and dryer. So that's great. And all of their um, materials are very eco-friendly. Okay, then we have this Ida Pet, Ida Pet Dog Toy Ball. And I'm showing you the medium. There are three different sizes, I believe. Oh no, that was a different thing. Never mind. This one is the size. So it's um, almost three inches across, regular ball size, I think. Made from non-toxic material, you put the kibble or the treats in those little grooves. So it takes a little more time to set it up. And then the little rubber teeth are supposed to keep your dog's teeth clean as they chew on it. It kind of rubs against the, the, the teeth and the gums there. And then um, it can also just be a ball if you have a really toy motivated dog. So then you've got just a toy to play with your dog. Um, little tip here for uh, having toys with your dog is that rotate them every day. So don't leave them all just out all the time. Pick them up, keep them all picked up and put one or two out each and just change it up every day. And that will keep them interesting to your dog. 
Okay, so this one is interesting. This is an iFetch dog ball launcher. Now this one um, has, so what it is, is you've got, it comes with these three tiny balls that go in the top and it shoots them out the side. So a couple of things, it uh, runs on six C batteries or an AC adapter. It, you can set it for 10, 20 or 30 feet, the launching. The balls are about an inch and a half in diameter. So I only would recommend this for small dogs. A large dog could easily swallow one of those and get it caught in their throat. Um, here's the catch. The dog, your dog has to bring it back to the machine and drop it in the top for it to shoot out again. That is what we call a pan retrieve in training and it is not an easy thing to teach. So, um, Either have someone show you how to teach that, look it up online, teach your dog the um, automated fetching, or I've got a video here of another way that you can use this. Here is our iFetch. We're gonna try it out for the first time with Benji, our terrier mix. Ready to go fetch Benji? Here we go. So this is another way you can use it is just to drop it in yourself. Obviously, if your dog doesn't retrieve the ball, then you have to go get it, bring it back, drop it in, and send it back out for your dog. So, um, you know, you'll get your steps in for the day playing with your dog this way, and both of you will get some exercise. So just another option for Here's our iFetch. how to use the iFetch with, with your dog. Now, the same company iFetch also makes iDig. And this is an interesting toy as well. This one's not automated like that. So what it is, is it's a plastic base with fabric on top and it has three different flaps with pockets. So you just stuff things in the pockets and then fold the flaps on top of each other. And your dog digs through and gets the food or treats. Um, this is great. I was thinking for dogs that already have a natural digging tendency that need an appropriate place to learn to dig. So like with dogs who dig in the yard, I usually teach people to um, set up a digging spot and have them dig, learn to dig in that spot versus trying to stop them from doing a natural behavior that they're probably going to do anyway. This would be great for teaching them the same thing is just give them this I dig so they learn how to dig in a spot and that's where they get all the rewards so they're encouraged to dig there. So I've got a little video here also of how you set this up just so you can see what it looks like. of that is that you put the toys and treats in the flaps or in the pockets in the flaps, fold them on top and then your dog digs through. Okay, so next up we've got hide a squirrel. <clears throat> now this thing is one of my dogs, always been their favorites because they like soft squeaky toys that are kind of small to carry around. Um, great for dogs that aren't as food motivated but maybe like squeaky toys or um, things like that. There are two different ones. There's a three squirrel and a six squirrel. And for dogs that like this thing, they will go crazy for that super tall one on the right with the six squirrels. <laughs> Plus, if they lose one or hide one somewhere, you've got five more. So hide a squirrel is definitely a fan favorite in our house. 
This next up is a babble ball. So this one stimulates your dog's sight and sound. So again, good for dogs that are more toy motivated than food motivated. Comes in three sizes. This is the one I was thinking of earlier. It has a two and an eighth inch ball, a two and three quarters and a three and an eighth inch. So there's a talking version that will talk to your dog when he hits it. And then there's also a version that flashes lights and makes 18 different sounds. The third version, oh yeah, there's a third version that makes 20 different animal sounds. So if your dog kind of is more stimulated by sight and sound, like sight hounds, this might be great for a dog like that. The dog in this picture looks like a duck tolling retriever mix, maybe. Um, maybe some Aussie in there, not sure. This one would probably, with a dog that has more of a predatory instinct or a prey drive or a herding drive, this might be a good toy for them. So the babble ball might be a good option for your dog. And then last up, I've got this wicked bone that is interesting. So same kind of deal as the babble ball, a little more um, technological than the babble ball. It's an interactive gaming device for your dog and it links to an app that you download on your phone. It comes with two modes. One is a drive mode where you control the bone movement from your app. So you put it on the ground and kind of drive it around with your app. And then there's an interactive mode that's sort of pre-programmed with nine different motions that entice your dog to chase it. And in drive mode with the app, it lasts for 40 minutes and in interactive mode where your dog's just playing with it, it lasts for about four hours. So I've got for people who <laughs> love the unboxing thing, I wanna mute this. I'll give you a little unboxing video so you can see what's in there. Um, I kind of like packaging that's sort of uh, pristine like this and well done kind of um, makes me think the product is good. And so it's got a little instruction card, probably some warnings for your dog. And then it has the AC adapter. So you can plug that in and then um, charge it with that little spot on the back. And this won't go on forever, but I just wanted to give you an idea of what it what is involved in the technology of this toy? Because I always want to know how hard is this going to be for me to deal with? <laughs> or is it even worth it for my dog? Um, so that's the unboxing. And then I've got a little video here of um, a dog kind of playing with it. I'll unmute this one. So this is sort of their program. Your dog. It couldn't be more exciting. Really, Wicked Bone is really easy to use. Just download the Wicked Bone app and connect via Bluetooth. And you can start playing with your dog. Move it with its virtual joystick. Wicked Bone feels just like any other video game. Dog's not super motivated by that yet. <laughs> but he got up to get it. Wicked Bone's nine preset motions are able to constantly keep your dog highly focused. The interactive mode is perfect for the moments when you're busy doing something important. When the interactive mode is activated, it is wired to guide your dog to play with it. Poor dog, it's exhausting. <laughs> Wicked Bone acts responsibly to different types of touch based on its original emotional system. Always in a playful manner that keeps up with your dog's mood and reactions. Okay, so you get the idea there. That is the Wicked Bone. Kind of an interesting little toy. Um, okay, so hopefully that gives you a few things to, a few ideas of things you can give your dog to keep them active and motivated and busy while you are trying to do other things. Or if you need to just wear them out a little bit, um, this might be a few ideas. So uh, make sure that you 
again, test these out with your dog with you there before you leave them alone with it. And keep your dog's toys picked up and out of the reach and rotate them every day to keep them interesting. So again, thank you guys for joining me on dog Q&A. You can contact me for online dog training or um, if you want to be a guest on dog Q&A and get a free training session online, you can contact me with my email, casperscanines at gmail.com, or you can go to my website for more information, trishacasper.com. Okay, guys, thank you so much for joining me, and I will see you next time. All right, bye-bye.